The RX 7900M is the latest release GPU for laptops from uh, AMD, and this is supposed to be their flagship for 2023. This GPU promises, particularly in this model here, featuring the Alienware M18 R1, a capability of being able to hit 200 watts on the GPU alone. Now, there is, of course, lots of different factors that come into play here, but as we can see from Borderlands 3, uh, an older title, but I keep that still in my suite of, of testing and benchmarking because it really does push those GPUs hard. Here, I've got it on the badass preset. This device is hooked up over HDMI to a 4K HDR monitor capable of 4K 240 hertz. It's the Samsung Odyssey G8. And we can see here that we're getting about 190 watts, no problem with the occasional uh, dips above and a little bit below around 190 watts on this GPU. So I think with a little bit more tuning to the drivers and perhaps even the BIOS to tune that smart graphics and smart access memory and all of those AMD specific algorithms that allow the Ryzen CPU in this laptop, the 7945HX, that's 16 cores and 32 threads, to be able to cooperate with the AMD GPU, the RX 7900M, which has 16 gigs of uh, video RAM, by the way, VRAM, to work in unison with each other in order to tune where the power should be shifted for each different game. Of course, there's a little, a few little tweaks you can do within the uh, Adrenaline software as well. I'll be covering that in a separate video. There's a lot to cover there, in particular with the new re newly released Hyper RX feature, which was promised in CES this year. There's a lot to talk about there, so we'll be covering that in a different feature. However, we can see here the thermals are well in check and the CPU uh, temperatures are also well in check. The fans are loud, but we'll be doing some thermal testing uh, separately. I don't believe there will be too much difference from the Intel variants, but in any case. So now let's, look, let's take a look here at Cyberpunk 2077. In this benchmark run, we're running in the ultra mode, so no ray tracing yet. And look at that uh, you know, figure on the GPU, GPU total. We're getting about 170 to 180 watts consistently. Occasional dips below 170 watts, but of course that depends on what's happening on the screen here. And if you look at that GPU, 60 degrees, so it's one cool customer. Of course, those clocks are not as high as I would have expected. I was expecting maybe close to three gigahertz on those GPU clocks. But alas, that is not the case here. We're really more around 2000 to 22 megahertz most of the time. Uh, that CPU does run a little bit hotter, the 7945HX, but again, 16 cores, 32 threads. That is a beast of a CPU, and this thing is absolutely performant and fast. So taking a look at that ultra run, we're still getting right around 60 FPS over HDMI 2.1 to an external 4K monitor. Uh, very, very good showing here. The min FPS is something I always worry about, 13 frames per second. You want to have as smooth a frame rate as possible, and thus the frame times are very, very relevant here. If you look at those little spikes on those frame time graphs that will ultimately determine the smoothness and the overall experience from uh, for in your gaming uh, gameplay so the 7900 here is doing a pretty good job we're seeing consistently about 180 degrees on that gpu which is very very impressive to say the least uh, most of the 4090s i've tested with the occasional dip up to 175 watts really hover anywhere between 150 to maybe 160 watts uh, with dynamic boost and of course that's the name of the game here dynamic boost that means the rating for the gpu is actually 150 watts but it's up for the cpu and the gpu to kind of figure out when power shift it should be shifted one way or the other and this has been a consistent issue this year i have not seen that consistent performance at 175 watt across games it varies and it's it's very much the same story here i don't know if it's driver tuning or if it's game specific profiles that need to be built into the drivers to know that hey if you know cyberpunk for example is a gpu heavy game that we should be pushing letter, lesser wattage to the cpu we want that graphical fidelity so let's give that extra juice over to the gpu again the same story there with the low frame rates that was the rc uh, uh, or the ray tracing ultra benchmark and now here we are finally in the overdrive the ray, ray tracing overdrive preset so this enables all of the path tracing and all of the latest technology previews that are built into this game and you can see here it's a stutter fest so the takeaway from this benchmark is if you're buying the rx 7900 m and hope to be able to play games with ray tracing turned on this is not 
the GPU for you. AMD is still lagging quite far behind in terms of ray tracing performance and even latest, uh, you know, bottom end, for example, a 4060 from the, the, Pro, the Nvidia series. And of course, when you combine the ray tracing with a uh, frame generation and DLSS tech, which is available in all three of these games, well, in two of these games that I've tested here, uh, it's a very different story. AMD is still lagging behind. Of course, you know, they announced this, this CPU at CES, and we are now almost at the end of 2023 before we even get to see this in our hands in one singular device at that. So, you know, that seems to be the name of the game with AMT, AMD, lots of promises, you know, very poor delivery in my opinion. So I'm a little bit burnt out now on all of the promises that AMD continues to make and yet fails to deliver because they've got priorities elsewhere. They're still trying to keep the, the mindset from the gamers, you know, okay, I understand that, but we need to see some more money where your mouth is action. So look at that, six FPS on the minimum. I think that's the very annoying part here. We need to have stable game rate, uh, gameplay here. To get that, we need as, as stable frame rates as possible and stable frame times as possible. If you look here though, this is another older game, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, but this one, there's so many different settings. You could pretty much exhaust any GPU here we are set at the highest favorite quality settings running in Vulcan mode and uh, we can see here we're hitting consistently 180 188 190 watts on occasion uh, with about 58 to 60 plus ish FPS depending on the scene that you're in so very good showing here for a raster performance if you just don't care about ray tracing or any of these bells and whistles and you just want to be able to crank your game or if you want to buy this as a true desktop replacement to say that you want to be able to game anywhere you know just take this with you or sorry not anywhere if, if you want to be able to you know game a, on an external 4k monitor then this is definitely a beastly gpu that can handle that and can deliver of course everything is cranked here if you tune the settings a little bit i'm sure you can get much higher performance even out of this gpu uh, but of course as you turn those settings down you start to draw less power and thus you don't really get the full advantage of the 200 watts that is the name of the game here unfortunately there isn't really a way around that so i think the summary for the rx 7900m here is it's a good showing right out of the bat there is still some fine tuning definitely to be done, both from the AMD side in terms of the drivers and the hardware uh, technologies that are built into the CPU and the GPU to work together. And of course, perhaps even from Dell, a few BIOS updates to help deliver on that and to you know offer the performance uh, by tuning on the hardware side of things, the power delivery the uh, and whatnot. So overall it, it is promising i do like what i'm seeing but if you're looking at it for just laptop use unfortunately i landed here with the 1080p display which really sucks they didn't have the uh, quad hd plus display or the quad hd display on offer when i ordered this laptop i wanted to be one of the first to get it so alas i kind of uh, lost out on that one but dell's website is a whole nother story and a whole nother complaint for another day Nonetheless, here we're getting very good performance from RDR2, and we can see here that the 7900M, what I do love about this thing, it runs so cool. I mean, it's just 60 degrees is nothing, and we've got this thing loaded up at 190 watts. Uh, that CPU could use a little bit tuning, but I think you know both on Intel and AMD side this year, they've all decided to push as much power into those CPUs to show generation over generation performance leaps and uh, if intel was going to do that amd wasn't going to be one to sit behind and say hey look we're more efficient so they've decided to push that uh, power as well as a result we're seeing these very very hot cpus this year that con consistently run around 100, 100 degrees celsius uh, but that said here very good performance from red dead redemption 2 on the 7900m at 4k over HDMI 2.1 to an external 4K 240 hertz monitor. And it's hard to show here, but it runs beautifully. There is no lag whatsoever or any screen tearing. And look at that frame time, as smooth as butter. It's as flat as a board. And that's exactly what we wanna see. That means there is no spikes happening on the CPU. You're not gonna have any micro stutters or any other issues. So this game is a beautiful candidate uh, to be played on this particular laptop combined with this particular GPU. So I think we'll end it about there. Of course, you know, if there's updates, I'll keep you guys posted on the community tab. But otherwise, I think from my perspective, the 7900M is a good buy if and only if, if you're looking to buy a desktop replacement and your prior desktop replacement laptop is perhaps a few years old and you've got a new 
nice and shiny 4K high FPS display or high fresh refresh rate display and you want to make use of that with this laptop, not to be bothered with buying a desktop, then this may be the device for you. Uh, but keep in mind that there will be coming updates from both AMD and Dell that help final, further tune this performance. So it's going to be your draw of the luck here if you want to go with the 4090 or if you want to buy into this AMD ecosystem and wait. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.